First of all, full disclosure, I built my current desktop PC back in December, but I never made a video about it, because I didn't have a dedicated place for filming DIY stuff, and because the build itself didn't go as smoothly as I expected. The case that currently houses that build is called Streetcom DA2. I chose that case because I like small form factor cases and because Streetcom DA2 was one of the few cases that were easily available at the moment. But in January something else happened. A company called SSUPD released a small form factor ITX case called Meshlicious. This bad boy can fit a 280mm radiator, a full-size ATX power supply, a 3-slot GPU, and all of that at 14.6 liters. For comparison, a typical mid-tower case is usually around 45 liters or 3 times bigger. Once I saw that Meshlicious was available in Europe, I immediately ordered the case and it finally arrived yesterday. But before transferring my current system into the new case, I want to talk about the phenomenon of small form factor cases. What's so good about them? Why not just go for a full-sized mid-tower case? It can fit more stuff, so it's better, right? Well, if you know that you're going to have multiple PCI Express expansion cards, a bunch of hard drives, or if you want to do a custom water cooling with multiple radiators, a mid-tower case is definitely a no-brainer. However, if you decide to go for an ATX case to build a run-of-the-mill gaming PC with one graphics card, you'll notice that there's a lot of wasted space in your rig, and that your PC is, for the most part, empty. Now, around 5 or 10 years ago, the ITX form factor was mostly reserved for HTPC systems, thin clients, and lower-end office systems. And more often than not, those enclosures were limited to esoteric components like flex ATX power supplies, low-profile coolers, lower-end one-slot graphics cards, and so on. Nowadays, there's plenty of high airflow, space-optimized ITX cases that are made with high-end gaming and workstation builds in mind, and can house fairly standard components. And SSUPD Mesh Lishes is one of those cases. It's made entirely out of breathable mesh, which means the airflow is going to be great, it takes very little space in the desk due to its vertical layout, and it doesn't cost a fortune. A lot of those so-called boutique ITX cases can cost as much as 300 bucks, but Mesh Lishes can be had for as little as 120 bucks. Mine cost 190 bucks since I opted for PCI Express press 4.0 riser and full mesh panels instead of temper glass, but still, I feel like that's a pretty fair price. So here are the components that will go into this build. As you can see, I actually brought all the boxes from the basement to make it look like I'm actually building a new PC. The CPU and GPU combo is pure on Optanium, Ryzen 5900X and Nvidia GeForce 3080. I made a pack with Devil and he was kind enough to provide me with those parts in exchange for my immortal soul. In all seriousness, I did buy all of those components included in today's build myself. Nobody sponsored this video, so if you want to vent in the comments about the pesky tech influencers buying out all of the PC parts, this is the wrong video. As you can see, this GPU is actually an exclusive, one-of-a-kind, never-before-seen NVIDIA 3080 Noctua Edition, which is basically just a normal reference 3080 with its fan shroud removed and replaced with two Noctua NF-A12X25 fans, which I simply zip-tied to the heatsink. This process is called deshrouding and it results in quieter operation, cooler temperatures and voided warranty. <laughs> Moving on to the CPU cooler, we got a Corsair H115i AIO water cooler that had received the same treatment as the 3080. The stock 140mm fans were taken off and replaced with Noctua A12X25s that I installed on the radiator using an adapter. Why A12 and not A14, you might ask? Because Noctua's 140mm fans suck, and even Noctua themselves know it, and that's why they sell a special adapter that lets you install their 120mm fans onto a 140mm based radiator. This results, once again, in much better thermals and significantly lower noise levels. Unfortunately, even though Corsair markets this cooler as silence-focused, the stock fans are garbage in terms of noise levels. As for the RAM, we're going with 32 gigs of Corsair Vengeance LPX, 3600MHz CL16. I also have two 1TB SSDs for storage because DaVinci Resolve eats storage space for lunch. And it also needs fast storage, so I can't just get away with mechanical hard drives. The motherboard that I chose is Gigabyte B550i Aorus Pro AX. This is one of the few ITX B550 motherboards that don't actually need a VRM fan, which means less noise. You might have noticed that it's a common topic, you know, throughout the video. <laughs> Last but not least, the power supply that we're going with is Corsair SF750. In my opinion, this is the best SFX power supply. 750 watts, very quiet, nice braided cable, super reliable. You could go with an ATX power supply in this case, but I already have an SFX unit laying around, 
so I decided to go with that. Besides, since ATX power supplies come with much longer cables, you'll have a very hard time managing those cables in your ITX build. So now that we're done with all the talking, I'm gonna try to film some kind of cinematic build segment with fancy lights and stuff, and you'll be the judge of how well that turned out. So the build is finally done and I gotta say, in my experience, this is one of the easiest cases to work with. Easier than even some ATX cases that I've had. It's very open, has easy access to all the components, and in general I didn't experience that frustration that I usually experience when I build in ATX cases. The only kind of frustrating thing was installing the radiator. There's really not enough room and I had to unscrew the front panel to actually get it in, but that's a pretty minor complaint. So usually when it comes to mini ITX cases, there is this stereotype that with those smaller cases you have to make compromises in terms of noise and thermals. But in Meshlicious there's plenty of airflow and it also doesn't have any, you know, tempered glass panels that would block the airflow. Here's an idea of what the build sounds like. So yeah, really happy with the build so far, I'm probably going to use it for a long time since it's definitely an overkill for what I'm doing currently, but in my opinion it's better to buy something overkill once every 5 or 8 years, you know, if you can afford it, than buying mid-range parts and then having to upgrade them every 2 or 3 years, but that's just my opinion. Anyway, that's going to be for this video, and as usual I do want to thank my patrons, Mitchell Valentino, Tim, and everyone else who supports this channel, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one, goodbye.